I'm holding a copy of what's called A Scientific Descent from Darwinism. And it's signed by 300 scientists with doctorates from prestigious universities such as Cambridge, Stanford, Cornell, Yale, Rutgers, Chicago, Princeton, Purdue, Syracuse, Duke, and Berkeley. And they say, quote, we are skeptical of claims for the ability of random mutation and natural selection to account for the complexity of life. Careful examination of the evidence for a Darwinian theory should be encouraged. Barry, should we be hiding this from our school kids? Because they're not being told that this kind of stuff exists. Well, no. Uh, interestingly, the uh, National Center for Science Education recently got 300 people just with the name of Steve or Stephanie to sign a statement talking about how important the teaching of evolution was. So I'm not sure that 300 people, even if the, some of them are at prestigious universities, make the difference. The well, difference the, the is... Science, science isn't a popular vote. It's not determined by, you know, popular vote. But the fact that there are 300 no, it people isn't, but, but with the credible point is degrees the, is significant, I think. No, the, the incredible thing about this debate is that people cannot distinguish between what is religious thinking and religious questions and those that are scientific questions. I didn't see anything about religion in this particular document by these 300 scientists. But, John, what's your response? What is being taught in our public schools? Well, I, I think first we need to be very clear about what the debate is about. In most states, unlike Dover, Pennsylvania, the real debate is not whether to teach alternatives to Darwin's theory, like intelligent design, which I think is scientific, not religious, but the real debate is whether you should teach some of the peer-reviewed scientific criticisms of modern evolutionary theory that actually exists. What's wrong well, with yeah, that? As a matter of, well, it's certainly a terrible idea because it, it suggests something that you would never suggest about the theory of plate tectonics or the theory of relativity or dozens of other theories. And that is you, you single out evolution and act as if there's some kind of major scientific dispute. And in fact, what you guys that promote intelligent design and the Discovery Institute does that, let's never forget that, is to suggest that because there is not an answer to every single conceivable question about evolution, therefore there's some serious gap and you're going to fill it in. And what you're going to suggest to do is essentially to fill it in with discussion of God. These First of all, I notice how Barry's sort of changing the subject. And there's nothing about intelligent design in what we proposed in uh, Ohio. And in fact, our position at Discovery Institute is that intelligent design should not be required or mandated, that the focus, what students need to learn about, is scientific criticisms of major aspects of evolutionary theory, which is already in the peer-reviewed science journals. If a scientist can read it in a science journal, why can't they read about it in their biology textbook? Now, yeah, Barry, this we is do what, we why do are support, you so we do support. only in one, one topic? Well, why one are you of the, only one of the interested reasons, in I, a topic that has I, this religious I overlay and not this... I turn it around. The, the problem with evolutionary theory is, unlike all the other scientific theories, whether it be plate tectonics, uh, there you actually do have legitimate discussions that, uh, that scientists allow you to have. Evolution, for some people, unfortunately, is almost like their religion. And so you have them claiming that you can't have any scientific criticism of it. The reason why Ohio no, had to put in its... scientific criticism of the basic idea behind evolution. There are, of course, what is the basic idea? of theory, you're going to have changes. Well, you're going well, to have... The things yeah. are going to get better. Okay. We're going to know more. There's okay. nothing wrong but, with that. But again, the bottom line is, uh, when you go to the science journals, you can read about disputes about whether microevolutionary processes uh, explain these macroevolutionary events. And in a place like Ohio, in the model curriculum lesson plan that was developed by science educators, including state university biologists, uh, that your group opposes, it was talking about these sorts of things that are in the scientific literature. Barry, What's I the just, crime there? Break, in, just I, for the life of me, I can't understand why a requirement that students be taught to think critically about anything and really to look at both sides and all sides of issues can be a bad thing. I became an atheist when I was in uh, high school because of what I was taught in biology, where I was taught one side in terms of what evolution supposedly um, um, proved. I became an atheist as a result of that. Now, I later learned, as I well, investigated science further, as I, excuse me, I, 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 as I investigated science further, I came to a far different conclusion because I learned both sides of the story. For the life of me, I don't understand. Uh, forget intelligent design. Forget teaching something else. Why not just teach kids to think critically about this issue? 
Well, the truth is they do. There's no question that you can raise questions in a biology book or a history class, but there are I some things we just don't do. I want kids to learn to think critically about this and everything else.